complaining about the priesthood. He's complaining about the political or leadership, political position or leadership. Not he said. They say it is a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land, flowing with milk and honey, to kill us in the wilderness. That you should keep acting like a prince over us. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Amen. And praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. This is not the problem of the pastor. Amen? Because it's God. And God brought these people to the wilderness. And passed these people through many trials. With just one purpose. According to the book of Deuteronomy. Bible said Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 5. Or 5 verse 8. I think it's chapter 8 verse 5. And Bible says that I brought you this. 40 years into the wilderness just with one purpose in order to let you know what you have in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why Jesus did have not taken the church to heaven and is allowing us that we remain in this world in order to make us know who we are. Hallelujah. Amen. To appreciate to give meaning to this salvation. Amen? Because through the trials, through the persecutions, through the problems, we understand how fragile, how wicked, how, how much we need of Him. Amen? Amen? And you praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord was passing these people through the wilderness and through this trial because it is the sovereignty God who brought these people to this point, who brought Korah and this group of people to rebel against Moses because they didn't support the pressure that Moses and Aaron were the leaders over them. And they took out what they had in their hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some people who have abandoned the church because they because the pastor is preaching about the coming of Jesus Christ, and some say Jesus Christ has not come. I'm going to take a, a holiday, a day is out outside in the world. Jesus is delaying. I don't believe that message. Amen. Are you understanding? If the Lord has not taken has not taken us into the promised land yet, amen, it's because He is taking out from our hearts what we have. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. In order that you and I know who we are, so that we may know who He is. Amen. amen. And when we understand how wicked we are, let me tell you something. We confess our sins before him and he is faithful to forgive us, Hallelujah. to cleanse us from all Amen. our unrighteousness Amen. and he is merciful Glory to restore to us, to set us back, to set us back. And let me tell you something. And then we understand how precious, how gracious, how merciful, how tender our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. And we learn how to love Him, to obey Him, and we want to depend more on, on Him. Amen. Praise oh, the Lord. name of Jesus. Praise I love the word of God. I don't know you. Amen. 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 Then Moses was angry. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we as leaders get angry with the rebellion of people. Hallelujah. Do you think that a pastor does not react because of the, 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 the behavior of the people? Because the pastor pray, fast, sanctify himself, prepare the sermon, preach the gospel, and when the people come to the gospel, to the church, and receive the word of God and they are happy and the presence of God is real in those services and next day they go to the beach they go to caravan and they play worldly music and they backslide Amen. do you think that the pastor is going to 
going to be happy? Do you think that the pastor is going to be glad for that attitude of some wicked people? No. As Moses got angry, true pastors, true pastors who are connected with God, they are able to feel the feelings of the Lord. Remember, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve when a people grieve the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, the pastor, the first one who feels how sad, how disappointed God is with men. Amen. Amen. But when the pastor is dead, when the pastor has not any connection with God, pastors don't care. Those pastors don't care if they, after a good service, people go and backslide and come back as nothing would have happened. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Somebody can praise the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. These little people provoked Moses all the time. Amen. I hope that you don't provoke me. I know you are a good people. Amen. I, I am not judging you. Praise the Lord. That's the word of God. Moses yeah. was very angry and said to the Lord, Do not respect the offering. Because we reach the point that we get tired of. Moses said, I pray. Let me tell you something. Moses now turned his prayer against this thing. Notice what he says. Do not respect the offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor have I hurt one of them. And Moses said to Korah, tomorrow you and all your company be present before the Lord, and you and they as well as Aaron. Then each take his censer and put incense in it, and each of you bring his censer before the Lord, 250 censers, both you and Aaron, each with his censer. So every man took his censer, put fire in it, laid incense on it, and stood at the door of the tabernacle of meeting with Moses and Aaron. It, it was the custom of People of Israel used to come out to be before the tabernacle in order to wait for God's presence manifested in a cloud descending upon the tabernacle. Amen. And so every man took his censer and they were before the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them. Notice, Korah went and gathered all the congregation. He deceived many people. Amen? Against Moses and Abraham. If someone is beaten against the pastor, against the message of the pastor, let me tell you something. He is not beaten against the pastor, he is against the Lord. Amen. And if you hear someone criticizing the pastor, you could disagree with me. Be quiet. Keep it for yourself. Don't transmit your bitterness to others because it is sin. And you will sin against the Lord. Amen? And Bible says that Korah gathered all the congregation against them at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron said, Say you separate yourself from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Amen. Yeah. Look, this rebellion was huge rebellion. To deceive all the congregation of Israel was a huge because they were thousands. Amen. And they were tired as well. Remember that these people took advantage of the disadvantage that they were passing through. It means lack of food, but they wanted it. You understand? They had food, they had water, they had everything, but not what they wanted. Because they wanted the likes of Egypt. And they took advantage of it. Promoting, saying to them, if you elect me as your leader, we go back to Egypt, and we eat of the food that we used to go back. I was the, 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 the target of them 
And that's why the people of Israel were deceived. And Moses was an intercessor. Look, these wonderful words, and it is the final part of the message. Then they fell again on their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and you be angry with all the congregation? It's a matter of fact. As we were dealing with the topic of original sin, that teaches, Calvinism teaches that the sin of Adam is imputed to everyone. And God is angry with everyone because of the sin of Adam. This is not the God of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Moses and Aaron said, Shall one man sin and you be angry with all the congregation? And that's why the Lord gave a new command to Moses, saying, Speak to people. I'm going to give to people one opportunity. Amen. Amen. Separate from the tents of Koran and Abairam and Dathan. Separate from them. Because the ones who don't separate will die. Amen? Amen? Amen. Separate from the ones who criticize the man of God. Separate from them if you want to receive mercy and not judgment. Separate from the ones who disagree with the man of God. Otherwise the judgment will come. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation 18 verse 4, come out from among them and don't be partakers of their sins. Otherwise you will be partaker of their plagues. Amen. Come out. And the Bible says that plenty of people separate from Korah, from Dathan and Abiram. Let us read. Then Moses rose, went to Nathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got away from around the tents of Korah, Nathan, and Abiram. And Nathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents because these wicked people, they defy, defy the Lord. Appear before God as nothing happened. Amen. I am okay. There are some people who commit adultery before the, 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 the day before the supper of the Lord and next day come and they appear to have the supper of the Lord as nothing happened. Amen. One day Amen. something is going to happen. Amen. That's why Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11 that because of having the supper of the Lord in a worthy manner, many are sick, others are weak, and some people have died. I am not preaching another gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So they got away from around the tents of Korah, Dayton, Abiran. Amen. And Moses said, by this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. For I have not done them those works of my own will. True man of God does not preach, does not teach the congregation, congregation how to behave, how to live the Christianity in this world Hallelujah. by his own. He preaches what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. He preaches what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Not by his own. For I have not done them of my own will. Amen. As you know, the book of Hebrews chapter 8, there is an exhortation, a warning, warning to Moses. Be careful to do the things that I have shown you according to the model that I revealed to you in the mountain. Be careful. Amen? Let me finish. If these men die, look, look what he says. If these men die naturally like all men 
or if they are visited by the common faith of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. Amen? Let me tell you something. This is a warning that we do today. If the actual backsliding Christianity remain alive as nothing happened, and Jesus Christ will not come back, Amen. And there is no tribulation. The Lord has not spoken to the ones who preach the coming of Jesus Christ. But if something new happens, if the Lord comes and pick his people, Amen, so you will know that the Lord has sent us. Hallelujah. Glory to Amen. Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus. You know what is happening in the Middle East? How I feel or ISIS are killing behaving people and the Bible says in the book of Revelation 24 that Christians in the great tribulation will be behaving as well and people and churches are so blind that they don't consider this happening around the world at least to alert the congregation to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ and you know why? because they are dead because the Lord didn't send them to preach the gospel. If the Lord sent them, they have turned away from the Lord. Hallelujah. But if the, if the Lord creates a new thing and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all the, that belongs to them and they go down alive into the pit, then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. They have not rejected Aaron. They have not rejected Moses. They have rejected the Lord. If the, the gospel is preached under the anointing of God with a zeal for holiness, for repentance, for seeking the Lord, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. These people who reject this gospel, they are not rejecting the pastor who is preaching this gospel. They are rejecting the Lord himself. Now it came to pass as we finish. And all the men with Quran, with all, with all their boots, so they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed over them, and they perished from among the assembly. Then all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And the fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and to Elias, Amen. To remove the censers and to melt them to cover the altar. Amen. Amen. This is the message for tonight. Amen. Amen. People of God. True men of God. True men of God. Have to preach the real gospel. Amen. The real gospel exposes who we are. And we are wicked and we are sinners. We are unclean. We are enemies of God. Amen. Amen. We are dead in sins and trespasses. Amen. Amen. And that's why Jesus Christ is the Savior. The Savior is the one who cleanses the ones who are unclean. Amen. Is the one who justifies the one who is guilty of eternal punishment. He is the one who justifies us before the Lord. He is the one who reconciles us. He is the one who quicken our spirits that Hallelujah. are dead. Jesus Christ is the Savior. But also when we are saved, when we are reconciled, when we are sanctified, when we are adopted by the Father, let me tell you something that he will rule over us in order that we don't turn back, in order that the, the Satan and sin does not deceive us. And this is the only way through mm -hmm. him to reach the promised land. Mm -hmm. This is the message of the true man of God. The false man of God is promising to people not to sanctify, not to endure the trials, not to pass through Suffering just to enjoy this life, just to be successful, forget holiness, forget rapture, forget heaven. We have an earthly paradise in this earth. That is the false message of the false teacher. Amen. 
to serve. Amen. Whether to God or to Satan. Amen. And this is the gospel that I'm preaching to you. Holy. That is Jesus Christ. The Savior and Lord. Jesus. Just make a decision. Get up. Hey, you may stand up, please.